Um, let's give it two seconds. Okay. And we're super duper lucky to have Tara on with us tonight. She agreed to do this a few weeks ago and I was pumped about it. Um, she was in the 22 minute hardcore test group with Ryan and I. Um, and so we kind of got to know each other there. Um, but for those of you who don't know Tara, she is a superstar diamond in this business and she did it in two and a half years with three little kids at home that were under the age of five. You were teaching at the time, correct? Yeah. And you have a background in nutrition and dietetics. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so busy, busy, busy mom, and we're going to hear from her because she's just a badass, and she's also in New England, so we love her because she's right up our neck of the woods. Um, so yeah, she's amazing, and we are super lucky to have her on the call, and um, thank you for being here, and I don't think you have slides, correct? No. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so I'm just going to make you the spotlight video at least so people can see you bigger and brighter. Hello. Can you see you like that when I do that? I could see myself like is that so weird for you do you want me to change it back no it's that's fine <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna back up <laughs> it's like you know it's like hd you know oh, oh well thank you guys i'm excited to be here i um i i'm just honored like these i love doing these calls because um you know i feel like I can hopefully encourage or inspire one of you guys um, tonight just by sharing my story. I'm just going to share my story and kind of share with you like what I did um, and kind of how it went, you know, how my beach body journey went. So um, let me back up to why I got involved with nutrition in the first place. So I went to school undecided. I went to college undecided. Um, I was a swimmer in high school, active, and then I went to college <laughs> and I gained about 40 pounds. I was super, um, I always had self-esteem issues and like just low confidence. I, um, and I was also lacking drive. I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And it honestly took me three years in college, um, figuring it out. So I was three years undecided, and um, I don't know. I, I remember the moment it switched for me. I was in a really dark place, and um, I remember I would like, I don't know if any of you guys can relate, but, you know, back when I was younger, I would, to feel better about myself, I would go shopping. And I felt like buying something new would just make me feel better, no matter um no matter like how big the sizes were getting because I was gaining weight wrap, you know, I was about 40 pounds heavier than normal. So it just made me feel good in that moment. So that's, I remember going into American Eagle is my favorite store and I couldn't fit into the biggest size they had. And I, at that moment I was like, okay, I need to do something. I need to change something. I don't know what to do. Um, but I got to do something. So from that minute on, I just started taking walks around campus and I would do it at night because I was really self-conscious about the way I looked. Um, and you know, that started the ball rolling with nutrition. I just started looking into like researching nutrition and what I should be eating and all of those things. And I started losing the weight um, and being active, just, you know, walking, walking led to, you know, home workouts and it was Tybo at the time and the firm. And, you know, I enjoyed it because I didn't have to go to the gym and people weren't watching me because I had the confidence issue, you know, um, and I still don't like the gym, but, you know, I, I just felt, I started feeling good about myself and I finally said, okay, maybe I could go to school for this. So that's when I transferred schools. I had to basically start over, um, cause a lot of the classes I was failing before, I just didn't have drive because I had I had no desire for what I was doing. So I kind of started over with my education, um, and I went to school for nutrition and dietetics, hoping to be able to educate um, people on how to eat well and live a healthy lifestyle. Um, well, fast forward, um, I reconnected with my husband. I actually we were great friends growing up, and we reconnected. He went to school for. He's a gym teacher, PE teacher. So 
he was always like, Tara, you should go back to get your master's in education, you know? And I was like, no, I don't know. I don't want to be a teacher. But I started working in the hospitals um, and I didn't like it. I didn't like being inside and just, I, I felt like I was telling and educating people of how to live a healthy lifestyle, but it was almost like past the point. Like I wanted to start helping people before they got to that point, you know? And they were just very negative about it. And so I'm like, I don't know if I could do this the rest of my life. So he's like, go back to school. Um, you might as well do it now. You're young. So I went back, got my education degree, um, my master's, and I started teaching family consumer science. So it's like home ec. Um, I taught foods and nutrition and child development. And, you know, um, it was great. I loved it. The kids didn't really care about nutrition. I would get a few, but a lot of them, you know, grew up with their moms cooking fried chicken and, you know, just like hearty, fatty meals. And they, and you know, for, they didn't want to change. They didn't want to change their habits. It was really difficult, but some of them I did want to change. The ones that, you know, started to really enjoy cooking healthy and we would do it in class they started to really like it and bring it home into their families which is really cool but so i always wanted to help people in this area i just didn't have an avenue of how to um and that's when you know after i we got i got married to my husband now and he um he was work we were actually were teaching in the same district <laughs> same school um and I got pregnant with my first and after I had her, I would walk throughout the pregnancy, but after I had her, I was like, I got to do something. And, um, I started P90X and I got it off of Craigslist. No, eBay. That was eBay. And I loved it, you know? And then I started, I continued to do that at, and walk, um, through my second pregnancy and my third. And then I started insanity a little bit that I got off the of Craigslist and I never followed through. Like it, I love, I love insanity, but I like, especially being a mom of three. I mean, after that workout, I couldn't even move the rest of the day. I was like comatose. So I, it wasn't like perfect for me, but I, I, you know, at maybe every other day I would kind of do it and then walk every other day. So, um, I found out about Beachbody from a friend who was in a challenge group. And at that time I was doing walking, some HIIT workouts. I was really into the HIIT workouts that I found on YouTube and um, P90X here and there. And I kind of had my own thing going. So I wasn't really interested in what she was doing. But she was saying how her coach asked her to become a coach and help people like, you know, get into shape in these groups on Facebook. I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. You know, I wasn't really active on Facebook. I had maybe 400 friends, um, but I, I, I started to research it. And once she planted that seed, I was like, okay, let me look into this. And it honestly took me like a week. I actually found my coach on YouTube. I didn't sign up with my friend because she wasn't signed up yet. Um, and she didn't know if she wanted to do it. It wasn't something for her. And she ended up signing up after me. Um, but anyway, um, I found Mindy Wender on YouTube. She was like totally normal. I remember her video. She had a side braid and she was just talking about how Beachbody changed her life. And I was like, wow, she's like a normal person. And this is like something that she's doing as a career. So I was like, okay, what do I have to lose? My husband was a little annoyed because of the price. You know, it was something that I was working as a teacher and he was as well, but um, it was real. I mean, I took so much time off having the kids and stuff that we were behind and, and a lot of debt and all of that. So it wasn't something that we could really afford, but I said, listen, T25, I'm going to try it and I'll, I'll make that money back in a month. So that was our deal. And I knew once I got in, okay, let me just see, let me just dive. Let me dive in. Um, and I did. And you know what? I only thought this could be a, like getting into it. I'm like, Oh, this is fun. Like this could be cool side money, like groceries. You know, I always got really stressed going to the grocery store because of how expensive everything is. 
And I remember, I remember time and time again, I would sit, I would check out and I would get this, this feeling that I could just break down at the checkout because of how much I was spending on groceries. And I'm like, if I could just cover that, I would, that would be everything to me. So I said, I told my husband, let me just pay for my challenge pack, my Shakeology. And I wasn't even a believer in Shakeology either. I actually had my husband use it before I did. <laughs> and he ended up seeing like really great results. And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to, to share it with others, I need to try it. And it, cha and like it changed my life. I had like severe acid reflux and IBS, and I have not had anything since then, any bouts of it. It, it totally changed the way I look at it. And that's why it's easy for me to share because of the success stories that I've seen. But you know, I jumped in and I wanted to run my first challenge group, even though I'd never been in one and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Um, so I kind of just put it out there like, Hey guys, just let's do this together. Join me in a group on Facebook and we'll kind of encourage each other. Um, I've never done this before, but I know we can do this together. So I had some teachers joining, but here's the thing when they were reaching out to me and I always tell my coaches this, they were reaching out to me and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't even know what came in a challenge back. Like I, I was like, if I'm going to put it out there and people want to join, I'm going to figure it out. And guys, that's a lot of, I feel like so much of the knowledge that we get from our coach training and all of that. Now it sometimes paralyzes us from moving forward where you're going to figure it out. And you, you know, it, this business is all trial and error, all of it. Some things I try and they fail. So I change it, you know, and I feel like a lot of times that's the problem. Like we're all just set and we're scared to move forward because we're scared to fail or screw up, but you're going to, um, but I, you know, I'm telling you, that's the only way to really, really figure it out is to jump in because you're going to figure it out for yourself and your own, like you're going to get coach training that I'm sure you get from your team. And I'm sure Jones, coach new coach training is fantastic but then you have to kind of figure out it out for yourself like her way of doing something might not be your way you might take some things she has to give she's giving you but then put your own spin on it um and you know that's why i always tell my coaches like my way isn't might not be your way so go on youtube and research and find find different ways to do things in this business and find your own way um, so I, I kind of did that and I had to, I just jumped in. Um, and I remember people reaching out to me after they, um, you know, I had a small little challenge group, my first challenge group, and most of them were teachers. And I remember one girl saying to me, you know, I just feel like myself again. She was a mom of three and she was like, I feel like myself. I feel like I have energy. And I'm like, I told my husband, I'm like, that's it. I could do this the rest of my life. I just want to encourage moms so they can feel good about themselves and they can actually, you know, I always say, put your, if you put your health first, then everything else falls into place. Like you can be the best version of yourself for everyone else in your family and where you work and your workplace and your friends. When you put you, you have to put your health first because if not, you're not going to be anything. And that means personal development as well, which I found out a little bit later, two months into my business, I um, was running on momentum in the first two months. And then all of a sudden, I ran out of steam. Um, I was diamond. Well, I, yes, I was just, I just hit diamond. And I really felt like, okay, well, what am I doing? Um, I really wanted to focus on helping people, but I also wanted to move my business forward. And I was trying to figure out how they mesh together because I didn't want to be so focused on rank. It's such a battle, right? And I remember listening to the surge and Carl just saying, just focus on helping as much, many people as you can with, with our products. And I'm like, okay, if I just put everything else aside and focus on that, then everything will fall into place. So I started to focus on that. I remember having a conversation with my coach and saying, you know, I, I'm trying to help people, but I'm finding that I, I'm lacking something. Like I'm lacking something to give them. I feel like there's something missing. And she asked me, she's like, are you doing personal development? I'm like, um, 
Not really. I don't think that it's necessary. <laughs> not that I felt like I, I'm above it. I just didn't even get it. Like, I'm like, I don't know what these people are talking about, like saying things over themselves and all this stuff. So she's like, Tara, just, and, and I don't read. I know it's bad. I don't read. It's like, I'm, you know, I am doing millions of things and I can't concentrate. So I, she's like, listen to an audio book. So I listened to the compound effect and I started listening to the slight edge and the bait. And then I um, actually read the go giver and that's when it changed for me. The go giver was something that really hit home for me. And then I listened on audible to the other two in his series. Um, yeah. The go giver was everything because that's what I wanted from this. That's what I stood for. That's what my business stood for. So I really took that and then I just started trying to share that with the people that I were, was talking to, um, like uh, my coaches and I didn't really have a team that was growing at this point, but, um, I, I wanted them to really get the whole thing, like what this business is all about. So that changed everything for me. And I want you guys to know, like as a diamond, a new diamond, I didn't have anyone building the business. No one, you know, people. People said they wanted to, but they really didn't do, they didn't, they didn't put in any effort. So it was just me. And I, that, I remember feeling at that point before I started the personal development, like, well, if I quit now, what would happen? You know, if I quit now, who would, I mean, nothing would really happen. No one's really working the business. My business isn't really moving that fast right now. Well, you know, and I just said, okay, I'm going to give it a year. Cause Mindy always said, you know, be here in a year. And I'm going to really focus on my personal growth um, and sharing that with others, sharing my journey. So, you know, that, that personal development was everything for me. And it totally, it, it changed everything. I started listening to personal development and all of the calls that I can get my hands on. So whether I was doing laundry or in the car, I would listen to, you know, the calls on, I would listen to Melanie Mitra on YouTube. I was listening to all the, the top leaders. And one thing that I, I'll never forget. Now, Melanie and I are very different. Um, she's someone that I look up to. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so organized and like everything. And I would love to be that way, but that's so not my personality. And the more I try to be that way, the less efficient I am. So I just, you know, you have to embrace who you are, right? But there's something that she did say on one of her calls. It was two years ago. Um, I was probably like three months, four months into the business, three months. And she said that, you know, she needed, because her husband wasn't on board 100%, that she needed to do, to not, um, to get up early in the morning so she didn't impact anyone else in her family. You know, because her husband wasn't a, believer, a total believer. My husband wasn't a total believer in the beginning as well. And I'm like, okay, I got to make sacrifices. I got to do what I got to do to move this business forward. So she, I remember her saying, you got to do the thing, like in the slight edge, you got to do the things that people aren't willing to do, to do the things that people can't do. So I wanted to get to a certain place. Um, and... I, she, she talked about getting up early. So that was something I could control. So I started getting up at four 30 in the morning. Cause I had, I was teaching high school. I'd be at work really early and I started doing the things that were, were necessary to move my business forward. So the first thing was I needed a vision cause I was kind of winging it. I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. But I needed a vision. Now I didn't really see the potential yet. Okay. Even though I saw Mindy, I heard Mindy's story, but that was the only one I was really familiar with Melanie Metro. But I was like, I'm not like Melanie Metro. She's very like, you know, I can't be like that. So what I did was I went on YouTube and I just listened to success story after success story. And I started reading books that really filled me up that really like sparked that flame in me, you know, that I, I can do this, you know, that type of thing. And I wrote down a vision statement. And what I did with that statement is I recorded it on my phone. Um, you can voice record anything. And I actually did it. And a friend of mine gave me this advice. She's actually um, an admin at a college. 
and she's like, you know, they, she has learned this way of like talking about your vision statement and really getting that in, in, in you. So you start doing those things necessary to get there. So I recorded myself talking about my life a year from that day. So it was like, you know, I'm sitting here on June 13th. It's my last day of work. I no longer, I don't have to go back in the fall. I'm watching my kids outside playing in a sprinkler. Like it was very detailed of what I was doing and what I was able to do um, because of this business. You know, and I have some coaches on my team sharing like them bringing their kids to Disney for the first time and how would that feel to them and all like it has to be super detailed. And what I did was I would listen to it. I would listen to, I tried to listen to it every day in the morning, but if I couldn't do it in the morning, it was like on my way to work or something. And really, really like I, I was starting to really believe in myself and what I could do with this business. And it really motivated me because it was my voice, it was my future, and it, it created a vision like, I'm gonna do this, you know? And so I did that. Um, I woke up early in the morning and I listened to personal development first thing because I felt like um, in order for me to talk to other people, I need to, have that oomph, right? And what does personal development do for us? It gives us that excitement that like, I can like run through a wall listening to the stuff, stuff that really sits with you and motivates you. You, th those are the things you should be listening to. Don't just do PD to do it. You got to find stuff that really um, resonates with you. So I um, listened to personal development and I would start to do my power hour before work. And I, because this is the only time I can control in my whole day, the only time without my kids in my, in my face running around. I even now guys, I still wake up early, not 4.30, 5.30, but I do that because even it's summertime, the kids are home and I have the time. Um, I don't know. I shouldn't say I have the time because you think you have the time, but then stuff gets in the way and who wants to do a power hour at 11 o'clock at night? you know? So I would do it in the mornings. I felt like I was more confident. I felt better in the mornings. I didn't have the weight of the world on my shoulders from the day. Um, so I would do personal development and then I would do my frag. The, the thing that I hated the most, which was invite. And the way I invite is, is I don't know, I, I build the, and I'm sure you guys as well, but building the relationships and sharing about your challenge group or your or your or the business opportunity, but that would be something first that I would reach out to five people or ten people. It depends on your goals, okay? Um, and that was first thing in the morning. And I did this because I knew they would respond throughout the day, and that way I could just hop in on those times that I had, like lunchtime or in between the mom cracks, you know, like the times where your kids are playing outside or they are settled down watching a, a little bit of TV, a little TV it won't hurt anyone. Um, you know, those little bits and pieces of time where you're dropping, where you're watching your son's practice. I mean, you know, the whole practice, you don't really need to watch, but um, those were little pieces of time that I knew could further my business to get me to my goal of being home with the kids, you know, and that was the ultimate goal for me. Um, and I would add to my network and I would post in the morning. That was it. Now I didn't do my workouts in the morning just because for me, those were no matter what. And I know I would always get them done. But for some people, that's something that you would maybe have to do in the morning. Cause some people are like, if I don't do it in the morning, I'm not going to do it. So I was, I, you know, I couldn't work out at night and that's what I was doing when I was teaching um, because it just worked with me. So if you have to work out in the morning, so you listen to personal development, work out, and then do some of your power hour to get it started or all of it. Now, did it, did it suck getting up in the morning at 4.30 every single morning? Heck yes. It wasn't great. Every morning I woke up. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And my husband would be like, you are crazy. 
I'm like, no, I got to do the things that most people won't do to move. <laughs> Honestly, I started believing it because I kept saying that. <laughs> and this business, when you really dive into it, it is amazing. The, you know, you're, you're running on that, that just the, the momentum of the, your challenge groups and people seeing results and feeling good and all of that stuff is so motivating. So it wasn't like I was getting up early in the morning to, you know, do something that was super boring. It was something that was going to, first of all, it was, I was doing something to help me grow personally in every area of my life. And I always say, you can't fill other people's buckets if you don't fill your own. There's no way I can help my coaches, help my challengers, be a good mom, be a, a good wife, and all of those things if I'm not filling myself up. I'm going to be empty, and I'm not going to have anything to give, and they're going to know it. They're going to feel it. You think, you know, my, the people I'm talking to and building those relationships to, they feel it. They will feel it in the conversations if you're not confident, if you are not happy with what you're doing and you don't believe in what you're doing, they feel it, you know? And plus, um, uh, you need being a product of the product. So when I say put your health first, your personal de development first, and your growth, your mindset, you need to also put your health and fitness first. Like, that's the first thing sometimes to go when you're so busy. But that's what's really, and what makes this business awesome is that when you're doing your, everything that you need to be doing, your vital behaviors, you're able to just share your journey on Facebook. That's it. You're not, you don't have to be salesy. You don't have to share products. You just share what you're doing and you're sharing your journey, like your story day by day. So that's why, that's what makes it easier. It makes it easier for you. You're going to feel good and you get to share on, on Facebook and not feel like a salesperson. So, um, those are some things that I did. Um, now when I said working in the mom cracks, like there are some sacrifices that I had to do and they weren't always easy. I did say no to a lot of things because I just wanted to move my business faster I did say no to some girls' night girls' nights out because I knew I didn't have a lot of time. Um, I did say no to some things where my husband, like um, a party, where my husband would take the kids once in a while, and it wasn't like if it was a kids' party or whatever, um, you know. And on the weekends, I sacrificed a little bit. So instead of me watching TV. For two hours or me um, doing scrolling through Facebook or go shopping or whatever I knew my weekends were really crucial for me because I didn't have so much time during the week that I would spend two hours working each day on the weekends and whether I had to get up early to do that or was it during one of my kids nap times something I would fit it in because I'm telling you those weekends really added up and they, and a lot of people are around on the weekends and they're social because they're more relaxed. So I think weekends for me and Friday nights, I know that, well, my husband used to coach football. So on Friday nights, put a glass of wine, talk to people. It was like my social hour, you know, and it's truly, it's truly the weekends and Friday nights and all that people are more social. They're more laid back. And you can really find some times to really build those relationships. Um, and I always did a little bit more at night. So, you know, now I'm not saying every single night you need to spend three hours on Beachbody. No, like my husband and I, we were like, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or what? It was Monday, it was Tuesday and Thursday, we spent time together, okay? Friday nights when he was home, um, and Saturday nights, of course, that was for him. But, you know, the other nights I was focused, I was, I would spend, as soon as the kids went down, I would spend a good chunk of time working the business, you know? And then on those nights that were spent with him, I would say, okay, I just need like half an hour to check in and check into my groups and do a post maybe and something like that. Um, but you, you need a schedule. So 
you guys, that's why if you start it early in the morning, all you're doing, if you, you finish your power hour early in the morning, all you're doing throughout the day is just, you know, messaging back and forth to people in between the times that you, when you can. And at night, you know, you can do a little bit more sometimes. Like sometimes when I had a little bit more time, I would just reach out to three more people or connect or follow up with three more people. You know, it's always that little extra that will put you ahead and that will help you hit Success Club every month. And those types of things, it's just a tiny bit more. And guys, it's not like an, an extra two hours, it's like an extra 15 minutes, you know? But the thing is we have to be diligent in doing those things. And it's so easy not to. Um, I'm going to answer questions in a little bit, but sometimes what happens is if I answer, I, I'm all over the place and I can't ever remember what I was going to say. Okay. And then the last kind of thing that, um, I just want to say, um, about this is I was always, 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 ever since I was little worried about what other people thought. That's what, where my con lack of confidence came from, you know? I, and I think I grew up with that, you know, my mom was really, you know, oh, well, what are they going to think, you know, that whole thing. And I remember when I got into this business in the beginning, I didn't present the business for a while. I was scared, especially to people I knew. I was like, no one's going to do this. Everyone's going to think I'm crazy. You know, they might join me in a challenge group, but why would they join me as a coach, you know? And I had that. And it wasn't until I got into the personal development that I was like, wow, and dove into those success stories that I was like, well, I have to share this. This is a duty of mine. Like, this is a blessing. Who knows who, who am I to judge someone, um, whether they're going to take off with this or not. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's one thing. It's like, and I say this all the time. It's like, why would I let someone that what went to high school with me or something dictate my success and my future. So I'm going to let someone that says something negative about myself or about what I'm doing affect my entire life and my family's life, the potential, like the success that we can have. I'm going to let that affect it. And, you know, as soon as I started thinking like that, I was like, screw that. I'm going to do what I got to do. This is for, this is for my family. This is for the people that are out there that I can help. I'm not going to let some, someone that is unhappy with their life control my success and control the people that I can help and inspire and touch, you know? Um, so that's the last thing, like the fear thing, you, you got to let it go if you're fearful. And if you are, I would honestly recommend just really digging deep into your vision because that's what's going to push you beyond that. You're not going to let someone like if I, if I would have quit, I can't imagine like this is the best thing that could ever happen to us. This has changed our entire life. My family, it's, I'm home with my kids. I get them up in the morning. My daughter's birthday is tomorrow. They actually have two days left. My older two, um, my daughter's birthday is tomorrow, and I'm going to make her birthday cake pancakes in the morning. I, would, I was teaching high school. I was never able to do those things. I was never able to get them on the bus. I was never able to do her hair. You know, I am here. I will never let anyone take that away from me. And that's why I'm so passionate, because I know what this can do for you guys and for so many other people in this, in this, in this world. Um, but for moms, guys, for moms, I know how busy you are, but it's just about making time and, and making this a priority. Like we, I was just listening, so I forgot who said this, but Beachbody has to be a top five. Like if you are growing your business, it has to be up there. It has to be up there in your top five priorities um, because you need to really dive in and start growing it. And it doesn't take 10 hours a day. It doesn't. It takes a couple hours, one even, if you have that, but you really have to focus and not spend it doing other things. Um, so I would love to take any questions. Um, 
I hope that that was informational. Super fantastic. <laughs> Awesomeness. Honestly, you know, one of the things that I love about having guest speakers is that there's really like no secrets. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there just isn't like everybody has the same advice, but sometimes it just takes that one other person saying it for it to click or you relate to them more. Um, and so I just love like, I mean, everything you're saying is like, you know, it's, it's what we teach. It's what we teach on this team. Um, so I love the fact that you got P90X from eBay and insanity from Craigslist, oh, you know, because so many people, and, and I know like Stephanie Chico, for instance, she purchased it off Amazon or something like that too, when she first got started. And I'm like, so many people would have written you off like, oh, you didn't, you know, buy through my challenge, mm -hmm. you know, so you're not in my challenge group, yada, yada, yada. But you have to remember that like those people turn into some amazing coaches. It's so true. It's so um, true. And then, you know, saying that you started with 400 friends um, and how many people use that as an excuse? Like say like, oh, well, I don't know anybody or like everybody I know is already doing Beachbody or yeah. already coaching or already doing an MLM. And you're like, go find new people. Like that's a lack mentality. And obviously you learn that through personal yeah. development, but um, you know, so you grew your audience. <laughs> yes. You, you just, that's the thing. It's like, people are going to connect with you guys in a different way that like, like some people don't connect with me, but they're going to connect with one of my coaches or they're going to connect with this person down the street. That's the thing. That's the cool thing about Beachbody. You know, we all connect to different coaches in different ways. Exactly. Um, did you, do you do it mostly through Facebook, like your personal profile or, um, so page or I, and well, as I grew my business, I did all, a lot through my personal page, but then I started a like page and I actually grew that by doing hit workouts because that was my thing. So I would offer free hit workouts. So that was the value that I was providing. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people followed me for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I would connect with them from my like page and bring them over to my regular page and build a relationship. Like now they're in my circle. Right. Right. So, and they're always watching no matter what, like I have so many people reaching out saying, Oh, I saw your post on da, 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 da. I really loved it. And then I'm thinking, well, why didn't you comment or like on it? Like people yeah. just don't yeah. do that. For sure. Lurkers. lurkers. They're totally yeah, lurkers. But they are. And you know what? I was one of those two for a very long time. Yeah. And, and you know, I've like witnessed that. My sister, my God, she is on Facebook. All, like, she's got three kids under the age of five at home as well. <laughs> Cannot beach buddy coach. No, she will not do that. But the girl is on Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest. I don't know. More than anybody I know. She knows everything happening with everybody. She doesn't like or comment or anything, but she's always bringing it up. So you have to remember that there's people out there like that. There's a lot of people like that, especially <laughs> moms, because who has, we don't have time to like. We're just scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you're, you know, if you start conversations with somebody and you're doing a good enough job branding yourself on your like page or your personal page or both, mm -hmm. when you start a conversation with them, chances are they already know what you're doing. Yeah. And that's like a warm lead right there. So that's oh, a very huge. Cool that's the biggest thing I think is like how you're presenting yourself on your pages because especially your regular page, yeah. I feel like they're going to ask you once you start that conversation, they're going to ask you and it makes it so much easier. The conversations. Yeah. Or like, I see you're doing so well, or you and your husband are rocking that workout or whatever. And then you're like, bam, conversation. Yes, it's right there. Right. <laughs> right. Um, everything is, you, you're going to figure it all out. I love that part. We just did a call two weeks ago on resources and you know, um, summer Tucker says it, everybody has the same 24 hours in the day. Yeah. Everybody has the same, programs and products that are amazing that we get to offer people. Everybody has the same tools and resources out there. Go and watch like a video, go to the back office. Like there's all of these things. So I love that you said that you don't have to know everything. Just keep going and you'll figure it out and you'll fail and you'll move forward. But oh yeah, one of my things that I did from the beginning, I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what a challenge group was at first. Like Chris Reed didn't even tell me. So <laughs> I, I was like, Hey, what are these challenge group things? They seem like they'd be a great way to build your business. He's like, Oh yeah, you should do that. 
okay. <laughs> it's, you know, it's so funny. It's like we have all this stuff for everyone, all these resources, all this training, but honestly, like just keeping it simple is the best way to go. Plus, like I say to my coaches all the time, you, I was awful at presenting the business. So I went on YouTube and I typed in Beachbody presenting the business. And I just watched videos and found something that kind of was my style. Yeah. Amazing how that works. <laughs> um, you talked about sacrifices, loved that. Yes. Like for me, it was TV time. It was sleeping in the beginning. Yeah. It was all yeah. those sorts of things. I did say no, like to weekends away, like skiing or happy hours and things like that, but it was all worth it. Oh yeah. I mean, two years of your like, if you think about it. Yeah. Two years. And yeah. Um, so I do have a couple questions for you and I know people typed in some things. Um, you did tell us already that you love the go giver, which I love too. I read that in one sitting, I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop. So I had to read the whole thing right away. Um, but what are your other, what are some of your other favorite, um, PD books or audio that are your go-to? Cause you said you want to find something that really fires you up. So yeah. what are a couple of those for you? Well, I absolutely love Joel Osteen mm -hmm. and he's my, he's my dude. Like, I can listen to his books over and over and over. They're fantastic. Like all of them. I do. Um, I'm reading right now. Find your extraordinary extraordinary. And that is by Jessica Heron. She's the one who does Stella and dot. Okay. She created it. It yep. is fantastic. Fantastic for confidence, motivation. Um, the 10 X rule. I love that. Yep. Um, and anything really anything by Darren Hardy. Gotcha. But I'm, I'm just like, I love Joel Osteen. I listen, I listen to a lot of sermons and stuff. Cause that really pumps me up as well. So gotcha. Cool. Um, what if any struggles did you go through while getting to 15 star. Um, I know there's probably many, but there's a lot of people here who think that like, you know, you just, you make 15 star and you never drop rank or you never drop qual or like, it's just easy getting to five star or leadership or, you know, whatever. So what are some of the biggest struggles that you went through and how did you not let them sort of just like beat you down? Um, okay. Well, one huge one was, my not this past year the year before I was I really wanted to go to leadership and you had to be five star and I was really pushing for it with this group of girls that were with me from the beginning well not the beginning beginning but early on they wanted it you know I was really trying to work one-on-one -on -one with them and then we missed it by a week because of my sister-in-law, well, my ex-sister-in-law, I should say. <laughs> but, this but, has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know, and I remember thinking to myself, like, I could either let this really, like, bring me down. It could have snowballed. Like, it could yeah. always snowball if you let it. Any, anytime you're, and I always say, when we do the rank fit, like, it's pu pushing seasons. Because there's no way you could really push constantly for a rank and you know that type of thing but we have seasons of it so what I after that I was like you know what I'm gonna I'm just gonna move forward I'm gonna move on we're gonna hit our five star we're gonna be a five star team we're gonna be an elite team this year and they wanted it and we just worked together to do it and I find that the best way to like when I was going for, we were going for 15, what I did was I shared a video. I really, I said, I think we, ha we can do this, you know, and I'm, I believe in you guys. And they were like game. Mm -hmm. So we, I worked a lot one on one like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done a lot of push to diamond groups and all of this, but I feel like the one on ones or the pods, like a couple people, if you guys are pushing for diamond, or are you pushing for, that's what it is. It's those, those small groups of people that really you bounce ideas because it is, it's simple things. You just bounce ideas off of each other. What are you struggling with? This is what I'm doing this. How about we do this together? How about we do our next challenge group together? You know, it's like, that is, that helps. Now, 
that doesn't mean that you don't lose rank and bounce back and forth. If one, and let me tell you, once you're a 15 star, it doesn't mean you're a 15 star forever. It means you're gonna, it's gonna take a good year to really solidify that, maybe, <laughs> or two years. But you know, people, they have to want it. And you know, you work with the willing, um, you, I, and in the beginning it was really hard for me. It's hard for, I think for a lot of us, we want it so bad for them, but they really need to want it for themselves. And that's what was disheartening for me. I'm like, don't they see it? Don't you see the potential? But for some people they won't, you know, and you, you guys honestly don't, that's what it is. Don't bank on people. You really need to keep on moving forward because there's going to be people out there that you're going to meet this year that are going to be your business builders. And there are going to be people, there are people lurking on your Facebook page that are your next challengers, that are your next leaders in your business. So when you're posting, post to those people, yeah. you know, that's, that's a big thing too. That's so that's good advice. You can and develop awesome. like people on your page, like, develop yeah. the personal development from the get-go before they're even a challenger or a coach yeah that's amazing amazing right there you guys need to replay that and, and mm -hmm. re-listen to that that was awesome um and i and working with the willing i mean honestly doing that is so much less like oh. you need to do less pd when you work with the willing when you when you're working with those that don't want it and you're dragging them there is not enough pd in the world <laughs> like you could be listening to it like four hours a day and it's not enough so that is really and, and it keeps your business fun so like I know. If, yes. if somebody doesn't want it they don't want it they just don't yeah. you have to yeah. find more of you and remember like you are who you are looking for yeah um all right so kelsey said um you said in the beginning you lost your momentum did you regain it through pd or did you have like some aha moment she goes sorry if you already explained my internet cut out and i wanted to make sure i got it all no it was definitely through personal development because i wasn't doing it so that changed everything for me. And then listening to calls of other coaches and how they did things. And I kind of was like, okay. And that's when I heard the whole Melanie Mitro thing and Carl and like the surge, I would listen to the surge. And when you dive into things like that and going to events, because in the beginning I was like, oh, I don't need to go to summit. I'm not, okay. I'm not really, I'm better behind the scenes like this where I, you know, when I get around a lot of people, I'm, I'm like really nervous and awkward a little bit. So I don't love, like I, I didn't want to go to summit my first year because of that, but, and I was only going with one other person on my team, but it was the best decision I ever made. Like it told, I was like, wow, there are people like me out there and they're real. And I can, you know, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. And when you, you, that, also sparked that momentum and kept me going and I was like wow this is it yeah. yeah um two final questions if that's okay yeah okay so finding building coaches I know that's a huge one that everybody asks about so how do you find coaches oh. who want to build the business not just be challengers oh <laughs> you know what's crazy so I'm like the worst at so people that I'm like, oh, they're just going to be like a discount coach because they say they're going to be a discount coach. And I'm like, they're just going to be a, you know, a lifelong challenger. They end up being the best coaches. <laughs> Honestly, it's crazy to me. Like the people that I'm like, can totally kill it. Like, just don't. So the best thing I can say is you want to find people like yourself. You want to find people that really love helping other people and have a success story. It doesn't have to be that they saw killer results within a challenge group. It could be that Beachbody, like using um, a program, has totally changed them from the inside out. It can be that. It can be like, you know, just little things, but their story is everything you know, and maybe they're just joining your challenge group, but having, helping them see killer results on the inside and out is really going to spark interest in people joining them. And so most of your coaches come from challenge groups first. Okay. So I struggle with this because I never was in a challenge group 
in the first place, right? Yeah. And you weren't either. So I'm like, a, a, and my success partner is Micah Folsom. So she was like challenger, convert challenger to coach. That was her thing. Yeah. So I always was like, you know, I think 50, 50, but here's the thing. Always, always, always when people join as a coach, my first foremost and most important thing is they're a challenger. They're a challenger doing personal development. And I have personal development in my challenge booth mm -hmm. because I totally think that people cannot keep the results going and see, see the results and keep the, the, the lifestyle if they don't believe in it and they don't believe in themselves, that whole mindset thing, right? They're going to be like a hamster on a wheel if they don't have that. Right. So doing that personal development. So honestly, I would rather, rather have them. I always say, be a challenger, start to share your journey on your social media page and helping them through that. And if they want to dive in and go through the new coach training right away and get going, great. But if they don't, that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. I want them to see results first. Yeah. Okay. So Nicole says, what does your daily power hour system look like? <laughs> She's like, I hate this word system. <laughs> okay. So I do the power of threes. Um, and I do it in a notebook. I don't use the chart because I'm just a notebook person. So every month I get a notebook and it'll be like the month of June and I'll have like three subjects. It's so, you guys, I shouldn't even be sharing this with you. It's so bad. <laughs> like I really have tried streak. I've tried everything and I do it for a day and then I never do it again. <laughs> so I just take my notebook and I... Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So power of threes is three people. But when I was working and I really wanted to grow this, it would be five to 10 people. So I would reach out to five to 10 new people a day and reach out would just be like commenting on their posts. And some would be, hey, thank you for following me on my like page. And just asking a question like how they're doing. It's not like, oh, you want to join a challenge group? You know, it's just building those relationships. And I would write, I would create that list. And, um, you know, so my invites were not always straight out invites, right? It was, Hey, um, it was in the conversation. Okay. So if I was having the conversation, they were interested, they asked me about what I was doing. I would invite them to either a free group or a challenge group, you know, so I could always control the people, uh, the amount of people I were, I was reaching out to every single day, but I couldn't always control the invites because I do them naturally in the conversation. But I'm telling you, if you're reaching out to five to 10 people a day, you're going to be inviting, you're going to be inviting a lot during that week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't think that, oh, you're, that's not going to, yeah, you will, but you have to be proactive in doing it. Like you have to have that on your mind. Like I'm going to, you know, that has to be in the conversation and you could gear the conversation to that. And if they're looking at your page, they're going to ask. Yeah. And I agree. That's exactly how I teach it too. You're always starting a conversation based on something that you've seen in your newsfeed pop up about them or going over to their timeline and seeing what they're talking about or what they've been up to lately and relating to them and just starting a conversation and actually being interested in them and building that relationship yes. first. But that doesn't mean that you can't look for those open doors where you can start talking about a challenge group or their goals or their work or like whatever that will lead you down that path. To right, for sure. For sure. Janelle Summers, um, she always said like, always look for those keywords in the conversations yeah. like that really like that. If you can meet a need, whether it's the business or a challenge group, you're going to do it right then. And like, and guys, this is always, always, my coaches are always like, well, how long does it take? It could take one day. It could take an hour. It could take two weeks. It could take two months. Like it all depends on the conversation and the person. Janelle Summers, I think it was in, I don't know whether it was a call she did, but you know, it was somebody who was complaining about their work to them, like work to her. And, you know, she jumped right in because bang, bam, bam, like here's this neon sign right here. Yeah. And she was like, have you ever considered doing an online business like myself? And like, that was something that was so out of my comfort zone before. But I was like, I was like, you just jump right in with that. But like, <laughs> it works. They're like, well, what do you do? How would I do that? And then yeah. you 
or, or they'll say something like, I have no idea how I would do an online business, but that's your job to then educate them. So it is looking for those key little, um, moments. Okay. So we did actually have a couple more questions. How do you use PD in the challenge group? Okay. So I, I, we usually pick a book, um, like the one, what are we doing now? Energy bus. It's a good positive book. Like there's so many just positive books like uh, Miracle Morning's even good or there's, um, I forgot what the other one was that we did. But um, so they, what you can do, you can offer it as a, a gift or you can just have them buy it, you know, as part of the challenge group. Um, so sometimes I do either. Sometimes I'll do, okay, I'll, I'll give it as a gift for the first three people that join or something. But otherwise I always just share with them. Also, how, if they can't get the book, we do pot, like I'll share with them how to go on your phone and get a podcast, download the podcast app. And then Shalene Johnson has, there's so many free podcasts out there that they can listen. So what happens is it's mandatory hopefully they do it. Um, and we have check-ins every night and that's included. So their personal development, their workout, what they have ate, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, and their water. So that's included. And I hope that I it establishes a routine for them for life, but mm -hmm. you know, that's awesome. I, ah. One of the things I'll mention, Tara, is that one of the guys in our men's leadership training said that he includes like the Darren Daly's he subscribes to Darren Hardy, Darren Daly's, and then he just includes the motivational quote or whatever Darren says, what he got out of that quote, where, you know, where he's coming from, and then he asks people in his challenge group to comment what they get from that quote or what I it is. I love that. Awesome. That's great, and that's like a great morning post right there. It's not like you have to you know, come up with this fancy thing. I like that. I started using this one in my recent group, Food, the Good Girl's Drug. Um, oh, nice. And it's been awesome because it's like each chapter is almost like a little activity. So it's like, oh, that's great. Incorporate it that There's way, so too. much you can do. There really yeah. is. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, oh, you said you have a three subject notebook for each month. Subject oh one. Just chart. because I don't like it to be super messy. Mm -hmm. So I'm unorg. I'm disorganized but I like organization. Doesn't make sense, I know. Um, so I, I do, I have a three, I, I, a notebook, mine's in the other room, but it, I actually, it's not even like a three subject, it's a one subject, and I just put tabs. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good at I love it, I love her systems, they're so good. So bad, like I really wanna be better, but I just, it's just. You can't. <laughs> and that's the thing. I fought it for like two years. I'm like, I need to do, and it just doesn't jive. So I'm going to stick with what works. I agree. And that was excellent advice that Amy Silverman gave to me. Like my first success club trip, you know, I, I was talking to her and she said, don't forget what got you to where you are in the first place. And it was true. I had started looking at all these <laughs> Melanie Mitch, <laughs> Mitch Rose systems. So I was like trying to do all of this. And I was like, I can't, like, it's just so time consuming. Like I can't do it. Yeah. But, um, so she said, reach out was one subject two was invite she wants to know what your third subject oh it was the first one was like who i was building the like just starting to reach expanding my network who was i adding to it and talking to okay the next one was challenge group people that i was talking to about a challenge group whether they joined or whatever they joined i'd highlight them or if i had a follow-up i'd put a f you <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> it's like so, guys. I'm and I'm telling you this, like, not to say to follow my system. I'm just telling. You. <laughs> and then the last one was coaches. Who was I talking to about the right. business opportunity? Right. And you know that way I could always go back through my notebooks. Now people do binders. People do you know power of three worksheets and putting them in a nice binder. Um, people teams the. So I have my team is using Teamsy and I'm, I would, I started to, and I really like it. Um, I, I, do you use it? I use it for like a day. I know. So I, <laughs> I try, but honestly, like it really helps my team be like a lot of them be organized and just get their power out done. Boom. You know? And I think that's important. Mm -hmm. 
But I do think it's important too to note what Tara's saying here. Like, do what works for yeah. you. Because, like, right. honestly, I've tried Streak. I'm like, I can't handle this. I've tried TeamZ. I'm like, uh, this is just, I've tried Google Docs and like Excel spreadsheets and uh, like, I just can't. Like, what works for me is my planner. Like, I've got this little planner do that over here and a notebook. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and making lists for myself. That's really what works for me. And I know that, like, for instance, Carrie LeGault said the same thing. Like, she's tried all that stuff. She just likes writing things down. Um, yeah. So it is. It's really what works for you. Um, but I think, okay, so we're coming up on an hour. I don't want to hold you up all night. Um, I really, really appreciate you taking the time <laughs> to tell us your ways. <laughs> <laughs> And to share everything with us. No, because it was fun and you're just, you're so like authentic in you. And that's just like, you know, it, that just shows right there, like why you're successful. Because people are the people who are themselves. Yeah, um, it's true. And you know, you're real. So people trust that and they believe like when you tell them you're going to help them, that you're going to help them because mm -hmm. you're being you and that's you. Um, so I really do appreciate your time and answering all of our questions. I think this was a fantastic call. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It was fun. I loved it. You know, everybody's saying love this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, of course. Of course. You. Keep it simple, guys. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic night. I will throw the recording up on the YouTube page and in our team page and all that jazz. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tara. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.